Welcome back. In our ENT series, today we are going to discuss about lymph adenitis. The content of the video, definition, types, clinical features. We are also going to discuss about the pathophysiology of lymph adenitis. The lymph adenitis, the word is divided into two, lymph and adenitis. The inflammation of any gland is adenitis. Here they are speaking about lymph. Guys, you can see here, adenitis means inflammation of any gland. Just like itis, it is inflammation. Same way, if it is adenitis, then it is an inflammation of a gland. Here they are talking about the inflammation of lymph nodes. So, it is lymph adenitis. You can see in the picture here, the swollen lymph node. It, it is the enlargement of one or more lymph nodes which are usually due to infection. You can see in the picture here, the lymph node enlargement, it is because of infection. In a body, we have around 600 lymph nodes. The normal lymph nodes can only be felt. The normal lymph nodes which can be felt are submental lymph node, submandibular lymph node, cervical lymph node, axillary and inguinal. These can be felt. A normal lymph node is a small oval shaped and a firm structure. You can see the normal lymph node. How is it? It is small oval shaped and firm. Now you see here a normal lymph node will be firm and oval shaped. Here in the pathophysiology these lymph nodes will be linked by the lymphatic vessels. These lymphatic vessels which you can see in the picture they are going to carry the lymph throughout the body. You can see here in the picture, this lymphatic vessels are going to carry the lymph in the body. The lymph nodes are given here, axillary lymph node, cervical lymph node and inguinal lymph nodes. And these vessels are going to carry the lymph fluid throughout the body. Okay. Then you see in the next thing they are saying, what is the lymph? The lymph is nothing but a clear fluid which will contain the white blood cells, protein, salt and dead tissues. So this is about the lymph. Now you see here basically what's happening. The bacteria will be captured during the filtration of this fluid. There starts the fight between the immune cells and the bacteria. You can see the fight which is happening between the immune cells and the bacteria inside the lymph node. This will result in the inflammation and a painful condition of these lymph nodes, which is nothing but lymphadenitis. So guys, you can clearly see in the picture here what's happening. There is some bacteria which is captured by this immune cells inside the lymph node. And once the fight between the immune cells and the bacteria starts, it is going to result in inflammation and a painful condition which is nothing but lymph adenitis. So you have to keep this picture in your mind. This is uh, the bacteria which is captured by the immune cell. This is fighting against the bacteria. Where is the fight occurring? It is inside the lymph node. Resulting the lymph node is in pain. The lymph node is in pain and it is also swollen which is inflamed. Then this condition of the inflammation of lymph node is lymph adenitis. Okay. Now let us look at the types of lymph adenitis. That is acute cervical lymph adenitis. Tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis, non-tuberculous mycobacterium cervical lymphadenitis. Okay, these are the three types. First one, acute. Second one, tuberculous. Third, non-tuberculous mycobacterium. All these are cervical lymphadenitis. Now, we are discussing about the acute cervical lymphadenitis. It is an acute condition, unilateral. It is on the one side. You can see in the picture, it is a unilateral pyogenic cervical lymphadenitis. So, you see acute one is a pyogenic. 
pyogenic is nothing but the infection in which the pus is going to be produced it is a cervical lymphadenitis it is mainly the disease of the young children from 1 to 5 years of age this is about the acute cervical lymphadenitis which is acute unilateral pus pus containing pyogenic and it is found uh, in the age group of 1 to 5 years for identifying the reason of the reactive lymphadenopathy here they are saying about reactive now we need to know the reason why is this uh, lymph node enlarged what is the cause what is the cause of this lymph node enlargement we have to see the reason of reactive lymphadenopathy uh, what is reactive lymphadenopathy? When the lymph glands will respond to the infection by becoming inflamed. Then it is known as the reaction. So reactive lymphadenopathy. They review the source of drainage to that lymph node area. So with this uh, enlargement, for this to know why the enlargement has taken place, you need to review, you need to check the source of drainage to that lymph node area. What is the source of drainage to the lymph node area? The main thing you have to look okay this is what they are saying you only have to remember acute cervical it is acute it is unilateral it is pyogenic and it is in the age group of one to five to know why this uh, lymph node is uh, swollen we need to check the area the source of drainage to that lymph node then the clinical features the child is often having fever which is 37.8 degree celsius to 39.6 degree celsius and then you see the general malaise with the fever usually the general discomfort is found with an elevated leukocyte count so the leukocyte count is also going to be increased here they are talking about anorexia anorexia guys it is a eating disorder where there is marked or reduced appetite and they have an aversion to food you can see the baby here he is having a complete aversion to food that's a eating disorder then uh, fever malaise is there okay these are the clinical features very simple then lymph node is going to be enlarged and tender obviously then the second type tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis so the acute one is very clear for you guys it is unilateral pyogenic one to five years clinical features we saw then we are discussing about tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis it is also known as scrofula Tuberculosis is the common cause of cervical lymphadenopathy. So guys, you see people suffering with tuberculosis, TB, uh, they also suffer from cervical lymphadenopathy. It is the commonest cause for the cervical lymphadenopathy. What is the commonest cause? TB. TB, okay? It is the most common presentation of extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So in cases of extra pulmonary tuberculosis, uh, there will be cervical lymphadenopathy tb commonly in the lungs so if any other condition extra pulmonary uh, the common presentation the cervical lymphadenopathy will be there in those patients now you can see here in the tuberculous lymphadeno uh, lymphadenitis the common presentation given here the multiple lymph nodes are swollen then we come to the clinical features the patients are often children and young adults they are asymptomatic and they have no evidence of active tuberculosis so the people who do not present the typical tuberculosis symptoms they are asymptomatic they do not come up with those symptoms these people will have uh, tuberculous cervical lymphadenitis okay they are children and young adults they are asymptomatic there is no evidence of active tb then we come to the clinical features unilateral painless firm erythematous swelling you can see in the picture here here they are going to tell about few stages in this in tuberculous lymphadenitis it is unilateral one-sided okay it is firm yes it's going to be painless okay then erythematous swelling which means uh, red swelling is there redness is there and swelling in the posterior triangle of the neck then you see here matting together of the substantial number of lymph nodes is common so guys uh, we saw that the lymph nodes are going to be inflamed and infected now these lymph nodes there will be matting together they are away you can see in this picture 
दे आर क्वाइट अवे वन हीयर वन हीयर बट देन हीयर दे आर ज्वाइन टूगेदर दिस इज नथिंग बट द मैटिंग ऑफ द लिम्फ नोट्स मैटिंग टूगेदर ऑफ द लिम्फ नोट्स इज कॉमन एंड ट्यूबरक्यूलस प्रोसेस इज यूजली लिमिटेड टू द क्लिनिकली एफेक्टेड लिम्फ नोट्स सो दिस प्रोसेस इट इज ओनली एफेक्टेड टू दोज लिम्फ नोट्स विच आर like it is limited to the affected group of lymph nodes if the cervical ones are affected it is only going to limit to the cervical one it is not going to the inguinal area and so on it is clinically affected group of lymph nodes it is going to be limited okay what's happening in this clinical feature there will be matting together of the lymph nodes this is the first thing okay then second stage will be the cold abscess in cold abscess the caseous node can liquefy and break down resulting in the formation of cold abscess you can see here the nodes they can break down they result in the formation of a cold abscess you can see the cold abscess stage here these lymph nodes are breaking down the caseous material is going to leak out and resulting in the formation of cold abscess now the pus can erode the deep cervical fascia now the next stage collar stud abscess collo stud abscess in this what's happening the pus can erode the deep cervical fascia you can see in the picture here this is the deep cervical fascia what is the pus doing it is eroding the surface it is the deep cervical fascia the pus it from here uh, from this thing what it is doing it is eroding the surface and coming down into the deep fascia it can erode the deep cervical fascia and through the point of erosion it flows beneath the superficial fascia so you can see here they are going beneath the superficial fascia into the deeper structures this is what they say in the collar stud abscess you have to remember in the collar stud abscess the pus will erode the deep cervical fascia and through the point of erosion it will flow into the space beneath the superficial fascia then the last one non tuberculous mycobacterium cervical lymphadenitis in this the patients uh, are mostly children of less than 6 years of age they will present with a unilateral painless and a firm swelling okay you can see here in this they told unilateral painless firm only uh, the extra word here was the erythematous swelling in the posterior triangle is what you have to write in the definition okay then uh, in the last one you have to write it is a unilateral painless and a firm swelling okay Thank you with this we come to an end of uh, lymphadenitis if you like my video hit the like button and subscribe